Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion. You might be able to see some of it behind me, it's tropical houseplants. So today is the big update from the Equigenera order, and I think it's been at least two or three months now since I got that order in, and I know the last video that I did I think was a couple of weeks after I got it in, and pretty much it is uh, almost positive kind of updates on nearly everything, and I could not be happier. So just to remind everybody what I got on that order, and I'll link the video up top if you haven't seen it already, I got the Philodendron Serpents. I got the main reason why I got the order was actually for the Philodendron Serpents, which had tied off. I'd already bought it, and I really wanted it, fell in love with it. And also I wanted to get the kind of sister plant to my philodendron esmeraldens behind me and a bit of a spoiler but this is the anthurium esmeraldens which is the other big reason why I got that order but I then got other things in it as well so I got the anthurium villanoarum I think I got and I can't believe I'm saying this still and I know this there's, there's more that have come on the market now and they're a lot cheaper the monstera oblique peru I can still remember the days where this plant, it's not even that long ago now, was going for twelve to forty thousand pounds. Uh, didn't pay anywhere near that kind of sum. The original video has got the pricing for everything. What else did I get? I got the philodendron heterocraspidon and the philodendron choco red. And, and this is the other one that I always forget. I also got the Queen Anthurium, so the Anthurium Warraquianum. I'm pretty sure that's everything that I got, but I do have updates on everything at the moment. So based on the last kind of update that I did, a few things were struggling. I will start with everything that was doing well from that and show you where they are now, and I will leave the things that were struggling last and give you those updates at the end of this video. But first one actually, it's the one I just showed now and I cannot tell you how happy I am that I got it. Oh, no, there was one more plant. I think the other one was the Anthurium pedatum, if I'm not mistaken. It's the one that had very finger-like things as well. So yeah, <laughs> that was a big order. I'm just about to place another big order to pick up from a pop-up event because I know some people made comments in that original video that the pop-up event ones weren't any better and there were struggles there as well, but I want to experience it. So I've been diligently saving some money to the side and I want to get a good mix of plants again and I should be placing the order tonight, if I'm not mistaken, and pickup will be hopefully, if nothing goes wrong, towards the middle or end of April. So about in a month and a bit time, basically. But let's see the first one and you obviously saw it a moment ago this is the brand new leaf and you can see that it's still got that blush there so i don't want to touch it too too much of the anthurium esmeraldens and i cannot tell you considering you can see the rest of the plant and some of the the issues showed up later i did move it straight into the coarse semi-hydro mix from Soil Ninja and it's doing exceptionally well. None of these have got, they've got a reservoir, but I've not been using it as a water reservoir. I've just been watering them as normal. At the moment, most of those plants are getting watered once a week, but you can see some of the crispiness that happened. This was right next to a grow light and you can see some of the damage that happened on that leaf at the very end there. But so far, this has been relatively easy to grow and it's doing very very well and i again cannot tell you how happy i am i'll do a bit of a head test that is how big that leaf is and the previous leaf was thinner i don't mind it getting a bit bigger but you can see it's nowhere near as big as the new one so <laughs> and i am loving those really kind of pronounced lobes that you're getting at the top there oh no end of joy from this one love it continuing on with the anthurium theme and unfortunately there is a bit of a negative update on this where one of the leaves kind of like partially snapped and i'm trying to bring it in so you might be able to see there that bend is not natural 
Uh, but the leaf doesn't seem to be dying off just now. So I've kind of rested it so that it kind of, it still seems to be able to pull some of the nutrients that it was getting. And it was interesting because that was the original newest leaf that came in when I first got it. This is the new leaf. It has been working on this for a while and it's really, really cute. It starts off like the tiniest little thing at the bottom. And it's only just now got to the top and it's starting to get bigger and we're getting more of those kind of fingers coming out. This surprised me because, and I, it came out that this wasn't the original plant that I thought I was getting. I thought was the one with the really thin fingers. I will be purchasing that one in the next order, hopefully, if I can, if it's still in stock when I get it. But this plant specifically has done really well. Again, it's in the coarse semi-hydro mix and it's done really, really well. As I said, none of these have ever had a reservoir that's been sitting underneath them, basically. So yeah, this one really, this and the Esmeral Dents didn't skip a beat. They came in relatively good condition. Yes, there's been some cosmetic damage that has happened to the leaves whilst they were in transport. But actually, this sits on the floor towards the house. So it probably doesn't get that much light. It probably would have grown a bit faster. Was it getting a bit more light? But obviously it came during the winter and it's done fine. It hasn't really skipped much of a beat. I don't really want to handle these leaves too, too much. But yeah, like this is another great success story. But again, this came and it was relatively good when it came. So there is something to be said about that, as did the Esmeral Dens. So both of these were in relatively good condition. The roots are spectacular. The roots are still spectacular based on what I'm seeing. There is some drying. I find with this one and the Esmeral Dens, I treat it a bit like an orchid. So I'll kind of let the roots kind of like start to pucker up a bit. This is looking a bit dry at the moment but it's because watering day is tomorrow and it should do okay. I found out the hard way because everybody was just like, you need to keep the anthuriums moist, but really, really airy. So I was, <laughs> and this is the nature of me generally of being an overwater and an overcarer. I tend to kind of try to have them wet for longer periods of time, but I've kind of realizing quite quickly that anthuriums do need to go towards dry if not go dry and then get watered because if they don't some of them will throw a bit of a hissy fit but yes i did forget to mention the reason why you saw that kind of half snapped leaf and i can't feel bad about that as well is the day that i went to film the geben green video when i visited the kind of glass house and hopefully that would have come out by the time this video comes out I had a friend who came over to take care of Duke because I was going to be out for a longer part of the day than he probably would have been able to cope with being on his own. And uh, bless her, I think that was the day that I got the second parcel from the unboxing that I did for Grow Tropicals. And she did ask, and it was a very cold day. She was just like, do you want me to put it in your conservatory so it can start warming up? And I was like, yes, please. But obviously, because it, that specific plant, I'm pointing at it because I put it back on the ground now, was there and obviously because of all those fingers she obviously turned around and it snapped so I kind of saw that and I'm just like these things happen and that friend was doing me a favor so it's okay there was a new leaf on the way not a problem at all so coming into the queen anthurium and you can see here the leaves are still doing okay some of the cosmetic damage did show up after it was kind of settled in but it's really done quite well. And you can kind of see the angle that it's at is because I've got it on the plant shelf. It's here and it's getting most of its life. So it's done quite well. Both of these have hardened off really well. One of them was a bit on the softer side when it first started coming. However, ooh, I think there's only one. Yeah, I think there's only one. But I don't know whether or not this will show up. Maybe if I turn it around this way, you might be able to see that there is a little growth point that's happening here. So I'm about to get a new leaf. I don't think this is a growth point. Ooh, that's softer than I thought it was. So either two growth points, which I highly doubt, I think one of them might end up being an inflorescence. So yes, I will probably try to pollinate this one because I know everybody likes to pollinate a good queen anthurium. And I will say this is one that surprised me because I said in that original video, I was really never got the height of the Queen Anthurium and I still, I'd say this to this day actually, I still prefer my Anthurium Vici or the King Anthurium over the Queen, but this has done well. And the bit of the background again, in case you haven't been around for this, I have tried a couple of 
times to grow them from smaller plantlets. Uh, somebody on here actually sent me one at some point and I was eternally grateful, but I still can keep it happy. This has done well. So far, this is the first one that has done really, really well for me. So I would almost go as far as say that if you can get them slightly larger and slightly more mature, they'll probably be a bit more forgiving. So yeah, this one is doing exceptionally well and a surprising to me, I'm really happy about that. So I'm looking forward to its new leaves. It will size up when it sizes up. If it doesn't have particularly massive leaves to begin with, that's fine. But this feels like a very robust anthurium at the moment and trying to touch this as much as possible because I do know that apparently that the, the, the rhetoric behind this is the more you touch the green anthurium, the more it throws a bit of a hissy fin. It really doesn't like it. Leaves to be touched. And there was that other video that I did with surprising things when it comes to touching plants. So <laughs> that's a fun video. If you haven't seen it, go check it out. Oh, very, very excited to see what's going to happen from the new growth points on this plant, but growing very happily. I can't believe I managed to get this out to show you because it's in a really awkward place. But this is the philodendron serpents. This was also the leaf that was really soft and it was just come out when it came in the post and it has hardened off beautifully and it's keeping its structure. Because I don't know if you remember, I had to tie everything up with plant ties because it was a bit flimsy. I think most things now are pretty much solidified but I also wanted to get them in the right position because where I was putting it, the light is coming in from a very specific location. But yeah, you can still see some of the cosmetic damage. I don't mind. This is a very happy plant. This is one that I thought, like all the philodendrons, had very, very fine roots and they all looked like they were pretty much rotted out. But this one bounced back relatively quickly. There has been a growing tip um since it got there but it was smaller so it is a swelling up now so i'm assuming at some point i am gonna have a brand spanking new leaf coming out of this caterpill and i am super happy but very very cool plant very very cool plant i kind of resisted getting this for a very long time because i knew that it could be a bit tricky and it hasn't been the easiest philodendron i'm not gonna lie but i didn't want to get it because of fuzziness is very similar to, I thought at least, on pictures to something like a varicosum. And the varicosum was very kind of like, oh, I got some hairiness. Oh, no, this is nice. A fuzzy, fuzzy petioles. That's amazing. I really, really like it. So super happy I got this one. Super, super happy I got this one. And super happy based on everything that everybody else was saying that this could have ended up in tragedy. And I think I was probably just very, very fortunate with it as well. Should I probably give it a moss pole? Probably. Is it on the list of 100 moss poles that I need to create between now and the beginning of summer? Yeah. Is it going to happen anytime soon because I'm super busy? Probably not. But yeah, super, super happy this one as well. Doing really, really, really well. This one, as I said, hasn't had new growth necessarily, um, but it has bounced back beautifully and i think it's a bit more established i will touch wood that nothing happens to it but i'm also very hopeful for this specific um kind of caterpillar to open up and hopefully have a new leaf so let me put this down and i'll show you the next plant and this one does have a bit of a janky moss pole but it kind of needed it i think <laughs> my monstera oblique peru and it's done quite well i haven't lost any of the original leaves that came in. I don't know if the people that were remembering this one was crinkled when it came to me. Has it unfurled? No, it's still crinkled. But I think that might have been a new leaf, potentially, maybe. Um, and it might have been like that before it even arrived to me. But the rest of the leaves are looking exceptionally good. Oh, there's a bit of a tear on that one. I hadn't realized. This one's doing quite well. And these leaves have grown in my here. And I think based on the fact that they're getting a tiny bit of bleaching, I think they're enjoying the light that they're getting, but I think I might need to pull this back ever so slightly. I just didn't know with this plant yet kind of what light levels were gonna it was gonna like. So generally with a lot of my plants, I will prefer to give them a tiny bit more than what I think they need and pull back rather than give them less and then they struggle and have other issues basically. But yeah, the moss pole, I don't know whether or not it's necessary because it's one of those ones that 
I've seen other people kind of mentioned that you don't need to have the moss pole necessarily, but it is a fun one nonetheless. And this one's done exceptionally well. I have to be, I'm surprised with this one. It did really, really well in the course semi-hydro mix. Again, it does, it has the reservoir, but it isn't something that has necessarily worked for it. But you can see I've got a bit of a runner. And the reason why I wanted to put the moss pole on this one is because what I probably will end up doing is chopping this section up and repotting it to start getting a bit more of a bushy plant. And I know a lot of people are a bit worried when I put this straight into semi-hydro, but it's a monstera. Most of the monsteras, as long as you give it a chunkier mix, they tend to be super, super happy with it. So it does really, really, really well. So yeah, this one has done excellent. And if you do get a chance now that they are coming into the market a bit more, do consider getting one. I think they are a fun plant to get and most definitely not like the Adansonii. It is, it is one of those ones that is quite good. It's interesting because the ones that I'm seeing from Equigenera tend to have less holes, if that makes sense. And even the ones that are growing in my care having less holes and again i don't know whether or not actually i'm thinking that they're getting sun bleached and there's not as many holes with this one but it was because it was creating a runner so i don't know but let me know if you've had one of these and have growing it for a while when you started seeing the slightly holier leaves emerge because i know some people say that the first few leaves that come in sometimes don't even have any kind of holes in them when did you start seeing it becoming a bit more like what you would kind of expect it to be. But yeah, let me put this down and we can talk about the last two plants. So the last couple of plants, and these were the ones that were struggling from last time, and they're still struggling, but there are glimmers of hope for both of them. So one was the heterocraspidum, unfortunately, because it was one of the ones that I added in. Oh, no, I will stop talking about the two struggling plants. There is one more anthurium that I need to show you. And this also has a new growth point that is the newest leaf that's kind of still coming in of the Anthurium villanuarum. And there is a tiny bit of crisping that is happening there. I don't think this is at its happiest. It was getting a lot of light before, and it's probably getting a bit less light now. I will maybe move this back into slightly higher light levels, but it seems to be doing really well. And the thing that I didn't realize about this, and I don't know whether or not it's going to show up potentially, you might be able to see there, and you can see the points maybe there. I don't know how much is coming up on camera. This is an interesting one because I only found this out after I did some research after I get it because this was a, an impulse purchase. Let's throw that in the basket. It wasn't that expensive. The petioles on this are triangular. So if you cut the petiole, it's a little triangle because sometimes you get like square petioles. So you get the round, the round is the most traditional one. But this is triangular, which is kind of cool. So I'm thinking this is going to be an interesting one to grow. Has this been a particularly fast anthurium? No. Is it because I still haven't figured out the care that it will enjoy? Probably some of the older leaves are kind of like maybe dying off a bit now, but the rest of them all seem relatively happy. It is still in its aroid, of course, not aroid, of course, semi-hydro mix. And I'm trying to see if you might be able to see some of the rootage. You might be able to see there. Isn't it glorious? So it seems to really be liking life in the semi-hydro. And as long as I'm seeing healthy roots, the rest of the plant will kind of catch up. But yeah, really super excited when I saw that they had a little new leaf that was coming soon. And this is one that I was kicking myself that I didn't get a slightly more mature one because everything I've read about it since has said that it's a slightly slower growing anthurium. So, and I didn't expect that I was going to like this as much as I did, but it's a very, very, very cool plant. So now coming into the ones that are struggling. So I started talking about the heterocraspidum before, and it's the long strappy leaves, and that pretty much deteriorated really quickly. Kind of quick update if you haven't seen the previous update video. Uh, the roots went straight into root rot. I tried rehabbing a bit in water. That didn't help. At some point, I just went, no, you know what? Chop. Chop everything back, basically. Got multiple nodes. Most of them didn't do well. Two of those nodes went into, and I'm pointing down because it's where it lives, the water propagator with the bubbler, and I've done the other video, I'll link it at the top there again. It, the top cutting was in there, and that is the good bit of good news. 
I'm finally seeing some roots happening on there and the plant itself is swelling up. So I've got high hopes for that one. So hopefully that will do well. I do need to take it out of that propagator and see if it's ready to just start moving it into pond. I don't want to move it too many times because it seems relatively sensitive. Uh, the other mid cutting had a bigger leaf on it, but I've just checked it. The entire thing rotted out. It's the only thing that failed in that propagator. And it might be because the light levels weren't particularly big. I do also have a mid cutting with two leaves on it, and that's in damp sphagnum moss in a kind of baggy. And I'll show you actually. There you go. Hopefully, you might be able to see. It's not a thing really exciting to look at there. And I keep checking the moss to see if I've got any roots. I don't think it's there yet. But I did see, this is the thing that happens with these plants, which is like, grow some damn roots. And it was growing a growth point from the node. And I'm just like, roots, roots, you might need some roots at some point. But it's still alive. Yes, there is a bit of yellowing on the leaves, but that seems to have kind of stopped now. It was, it was getting bad at a certain point, but I'm assuming something is happening within this environment that is kind of helping it so that is good and as i said the top cutting which again has me hopeful to get some of those larger leaves faster potentially is the other one that's doing well which is impressive because that had the tiniest bit of a leaf and the growth of the growth point at the top and the tiniest bit of the leaf really hadn't matured yet so i'm just like this is risky like nothing else but it hardened off that tiny bit of the leaf and i'll see if i can sort of clip here and the growing tip as I said, it's swelling up and I did see a root that was happening the other day. So hopefully I'll be able to start growing that out. But yeah, that was one of the ones because a lot of people have said about the, these things and it's good. And I agree. Assume you're getting a stick and your uh, wet stick and you're starting from scratch without any roots, especially the philodendrons. I, I found most of the philodendrons roots were pretty much rubbish by the time they got to me. So I'd be curious to see if during the pop up event that would be different because I have a very sneaky suspicion that the process of them bringing the plants into the country because they're coming along with them might be a bit faster. I might be entirely wrong with that one, but we'll see. But yes, this one I've got hopes for still, but I'm fully expecting that this might not do well. This might be one that I will put into the next order just as a failed attempt to maybe see if I can get this to grow. It's interesting because I cannot find this propagates of this anywhere in the UK and the ones that I'm finding are ridiculously expensive which I'm assuming is because a lot of people that may have got it from companies like Equigenera and have had tried to rehab it because it really didn't like the transportation might have the same kind of experiences and my concern with that is even if I buy it in the UK is this the type of plant that's so super sensitive that even getting into the post in the summer for a day in the UK might still knock it back considerably so <laughs> Let's see how it goes. And I've left the, the, the biggest struggle bus of a plant for last, which is interesting that I say that because this wasn't a plant. I thought the heterocraspidin was the one that was doing the worst out of all of them. But actually the El Choco Red or the Rube Rejuvenile one is the one that struggled a lot. Some people might have been able to see it somewhere around here when uh, I was propagating recently. By the way, this is a brand new leaf from the Monst monstera philodendron smeral dense that i did um air layering at the top and i chopped it back and i've put it into some semi hydro mix and it's right at the bottom because i wanted to get bushy again and obviously it's hitting the ceiling so i needed to like do something about that but it used to be there and i thought it was doing something and i kept watering it and i kept using up the water but i just checked the roots and i'm just like no everything is rotted the leaves pretty much all dropped off there was the growing tip and the stem that was left without any roots on it at all. I have chucked it into a propagation box with decent lye. It's, there's a lot of humidity in there. There's a damp sphagnum moss. And I literally thought it was going to die and I might have to buy it another way because I did actually end up liking that plant. Again, it wasn't one that I really wanted to get, but I got it and I'm just like, oh, this is actually quite nice. So the good thing is I just checked it now because... I don't know if I'm the only one with propagation boxes. You put things in there and you generally tend to forget what you've put in there. And I'm just like, oh, it must be somewhere in there. Has it all rotted away? <gasps> the, the new leaf has actually started going up because I've had to lie it on its side. It started to move up and it's starting to become bigger. So it means it's doing something. Whether or not it's using whatever energy is still left in the tiniest bit of a stem that's left that hasn't rotted, might also be the case but i'm really hoping it might start getting some roots and i'll go and do some digging straight after this video to see but that's been the update so far 
Let me know in the comments down below if you would like another update, maybe at six months or a year. But to be fair, at the year stage for most of these plants, I'll probably do a review on them just to kind of give you the full experience from them. And these are new plants that have come into my environment and I can give you my kind of honest opinion as to each one of the plants when we can do a proper deep dive like I do on my review series as to how it's been in terms of its care. But if you do want another kind of group update like this, maybe in, it's six months from the order of the date, so four months from now, do let me know and I'll be more than happy to do that for you. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I shall see you here soon and I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks. Bye.